Hello, this short video will show you how you can use RC Merger to clone DB2 structures and data quickly and easily. With the CA administration tools, we have several neat tricks for cloning tables and their data, and in this video we will step through the RC Merger process. RC Merger is a component of RC Migrator and is available at no extra cost for all CA RC Migrator customers. It allows us to perform high-speed data movements of objects including object creation if required, between DB2 subsystems or within the same subsystem. In a nutshell, it works by moving or copying unstructured DB2 data, either by working directly with the underlying vSAN datasets or snapshot point in time copies, or with consistent flash copies. Because we're not having to perform potentially lengthy unload and load processing, which would include index rebuilds, the RC merger solution of copying table spaces and index spaces together means that we save intermediary disk space as well as CPU and elapsed time. Plus, this method ensures consistency between our table spaces and their indexes and any auxiliary objects like log table spaces, so there is no need to run additional check utilities, which again saves time and resources and potentially some stress in having to resolve any inconsistencies. As you've come to expect with the CADB2 tools, you always have a number of options and RC Merger allows you to choose whether to only move the data or whether to create the new target objects too, and if you want to perform a move of the data or a copy of the data. If you choose data only, this means you already have target objects created with the same structure as the source, so this makes refreshing existing structures easy. If we want a brand new environment based on an existing environment, RC Merger can create the target structures using global change rules to support the target environment's naming standards and copy the data in one quick job. With the copy option, you will have the objects and data in both the source and the target when the process completes, but the move option just keeps one copy of the data, so RC Merger moves it from the source to the target. Let's now step through the process of setting up and executing an RC merger strategy, starting with an overview of the use case selected for this demo. Because there are so many possible options and use cases, we will assume the following situation for this example. We need to provide a clone of a test environment for some developers to use. We currently only have the new database, but no other DB2 objects exist within it. So we need RC Merger to create the new objects in the target database, with a new schema and associated new naming standards too. We will use an existing storage group as well as a database that has been created. We need to copy the data from the existing test environment to the new schema. We also have a requirement to copy the run stats data across because some of the statistics in the source tables have previously been copied from the production environment and need to be maintained in the new schema. The first part of the process within the tool is the strategy creation. But first things first, we enter into RC Migrator from the main CA Database Management Solutions for DB2 menu, and that's because RC Merger is a subcomponent of RC Migrator. Then we enter Strategy Services, option one. Strategy Services is a control center for RC Migrator, and we use it to create and maintain migration, alteration, and compare strategies. Here we complete the line to give the basic details about the strategy. We say that we want to create a new strategy called RMM Demo with a description of RC Merger Demo. Our creator ID is already populated, shown here in the middle in blue. The type of strategy we need in this case is a migrate, and for SO or share option we are saying that we are happy for anyone else on the system to view, use and change this strategy if they like. And the final piece of information is the source DB2 subsystem ID, which is where our existing DB2 objects are located. If you want to check what any of the possible options are on any of the screens, you can press PF1 or put a question mark in the field and press enter and the online help will guide you. Once we have completed this line of information, we press enter to take us to the next screen. On this screen, we start to make our selection for the objects that are in scope. We are given three options associated with this selection, which are in the box on the side. Here we are using S for select so that we can see the subsequent options on the next screen. However, once you become familiar with these options, you may choose to use A for auto build, 
which takes your criteria and performs an implode and explode, which means all objects above and below the objects you select will be included. Option E for explode will include all objects in the tree structure below the object that you are choosing. The auto build and explode options give you a shortcut to setting up your strategy when you're familiar um, with what, what's included in these options. But for now, we are choosing a database and selecting it with an S. And at the bottom, we specify the name of the database. If we were to leave the name blank at the bottom, we would get a complete list of databases in the subsystem which we could choose from. Alternatively, if we have a very specific criteria for selection, we could use the other filters like providing the name of the creator of the object or by getting even more granular and providing an SQL where clause. We press enter to move on. On this screen, we decide which objects associated with our database we want to include in the scope of our strategy. When an object is exploded, it means that all of the objects below the primary object are included. So all of the trees and branches beneath the objects we choose on the previous primary option selection screen. When an object is imploded, it means that all of the objects above the primary object are included. You may find this implode option particularly useful if you have a view which joins tables that reside in different databases, as you can ensure that all of the necessary objects are in scope to support the view. In this case, we are going to explode objects below the database. This is a very simple example, so we can just choose to include table spaces, tables, indexes and views. The letter A that we see here under those selected columns means that we want RC Merger to auto build all related objects for us. We could put an S instead and we would then be able to choose which objects to include. For example, if we only wanted to migrate some of the table spaces, we could put an S under the TS column and then choose which table spaces to include. Once done, we type end or PF3 and our strategy is saved and we're ready for the next phase of the process. The next step is to analyse the strategy. Back at the strategy services main menu, we can see the strategy that we have just created and now we need to analyse it. What the analysis process does is to take the strategy definition and generate an executable output file to perform what we request. Once the analysis output has been generated, we can review and edit it. So in the O or option column next to our strategy, we put an M, which is for a move analysis. We press enter to go to the next screen. On this screen, we choose B to analyze the strategy via a batch job, and we choose Y for update options and global changes. We also have to specify our target DB2 subsystem ID. In this case, it is the same as our source, but it will be in a new database within that subsystem. We recommend that regular users define profiles for their options and sets for their global changes to make the process quicker, easier and with less risk of mid missing something that you wanted to include or specify. Press enter once you have completed these options to take you to the analysis options. These are the analysis options that you would normally see if you're using RC Migrator or RC Compare. Because one of our requirements is that we want the catalogue statistics for these objects to be copied from the source to the target, we choose option S for the stats field under the utility options, and this generates the SQL to propagate the st statistics to the target objects. For RC Merger, the important options are on the second page, so we PF8 to page down. Here we have several critical options for the RC Merger strategy. First, we have to choose if we are going to move or copy the objects and data. We want to create a new copy, so we choose C for copy. The source of our data is the underlying vSAM datasets from our existing objects, so we choose D for DB2. The last option that is highlighted in the red box is reserve OBIDs. This is an important aspect of RC Merger because when copying data in this way, if the object IDs don't match between the source and the target, then an OBID XLAT is necessary for every page which can have a performance overhead. If the OBID for the table is not reserved, then there's a chance that another object could acquire the OBID in the target database, then the target table will end up with an OBID that is different to the source and the translation will then have to occur. We can ask RC Merger to reserve the OBID at the target by creating a whole table up front with the appropriate OBID where it's possible. 
This means that when it comes to the time for the new target table to be created, after its table space has been defined, it will still be able to use the matching OBID and the performance for the copy is then optimal. On the lower section of this screen, the options here relate to the consistency that we want to ensure from our source objects and the status of the source and target objects during the execution and once it has completed. Here we want consistency, so we are asking RC Merger to start the source objects in read-only mode and when the execution completes, we are asking for both the source and the target to be left in read-write mode. Once we're happy with our option settings, we type save on the command line and PF3, which takes us to the next screen. We are now presented with the global change panels. Here we have every object type and we have to specify the mapping between our source and target. So this is the basis of what the new objects will have for their naming standards, like database, storage group, owner or schema, buffer pools, and so on. We have to spend some time going through each of the sections that are relevant to our object selection, but this is another place where you can use a rule set that is defined once and can be reused. In this example, the important changes are the database name and schema name for any tables, indexes and views. The storage group, buffer pools and table space names will be the same between the source and the target. Once done, you can save the global change set by overtyping the set name, share option and description at the top and then you can reuse it for future analyses. Or you can leave it as temp, and it is only available for the current analysis. PF3 once done. On this screen, we can choose the destination of the JCL for the analysis. For now, we will do a P for preview, and we can then submit the job after we have reviewed it. You could choose to submit it immediately with a J for JES, or save it to a data set with D. If you choose option D, then you need to specify the dataset name you want to save it to in the second section, which is blank in this example. At the bottom, you can update your job card. When you press enter, the full JCL will be displayed in edit mode. You can page through the JCL and check your analysis options and global changes are all as you wish. You can then submit the job to perform the analysis and PF3 back to the main strategy services menu. Check your job output and review any warnings that have resulted in a return code of 4. A return code higher than 4 means that an error has occurred which should be investigated. The last phase is to execute the analysis to actually implement the changes or the migration that we, that we are requesting. Back at the strategy services main menu, we can see that we now have a new item in the list. We have completed a move analysis for RC merger and we can browse this output with a B. As you scroll through the report, you will see your analysis options and the global changes showing what will change from the source to the target. As you page down further, you will come across the Reserve OBID section, which is shown at the top of this screen now. And then further down, we can see the mapping from the source to the target objects, which is shown at the bottom of the screen. Then we see the objects all being restarted in the mode that we requested in the analysis options. In this case, read write. Finally, we see the SQL that will perform the DB2 catalog updates in order to copy the run stats from the source to the target. If everything looks as we expect, and we are ready to complete the execution of the RC merger process, then we can proceed to the next step. Back on the strategy services main menu, we simply put an S next to the move item in order to generate the JCL to submit the analysis and perform the migration or copy of the objects and data. Similarly to the analysis job submission panel, we have this interface to the batch processor where we make our final processing options. For RC merger, the execution has to be done in batch mode, so select B. We have a final check that this is definitely the strategy we want to execute and we review the processing options towards the bottom of the screen, which look okay for this execution. When we press enter, we have the choice of the destination again and we can update the job card. We can go ahead and submit the job now. Everything is ready. In the output, one of the first things we can see after the analysis report is the creation of the hold table space in order to support the reserve OBID processing. Then when we page down further through the output, we see the creation of the target table space. We then see the table creation and subsequently for any indexes, we see a similar output to what is shown here. 
After the objects have been created, RC Manager prepares for copying the data. So at this point, the source objects are started in read-only mode and the target objects are stopped. Then the data migration occurs as is shown here. This section of output details the source table space and index as well as the target table space, table and index. This continues if we page down. Here we see the remainder of the instruction to copy the data followed by the confirmation that 180 pages were copied for the index and table space. Then as each object completes successfully, the status of the table space and index space are reset to read-write mode as we specified, and then the source objects are restarted back into read-write mode too. Finally, if everything has been successful, the run stats updates are made to the catalog using the SQL updates that were generated. If we switch into RC Query, we can see that the tables have indeed been created and populated, including the stats copied across from the source to the target objects. We can double check by displaying the objects that everything is indeed in read-write mode and these objects are ready to be used. Thank you for watching this short video on cloning DB2 structures and data using CARC Merger.